Hello, this is Carlos Marrero, and you're watching Trendencias, reporting on the exciting world of fashion, beauty, and entertainment. Hello, hello, hello. It's the end of the year, yes! This is our last episode for the year, and I don't know about you, but if 2020 was any, if you felt, I just have to describe it. I felt like a shoe in a dryer cycle during this 2020. It was like boom, 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 boom. So I am so excited that this is over. Look at my hair, it just became all crazy. Um, I am so excited to be here at the end of the year. And we have a great show. And I have one of the most exciting guests that I've ever had. I've been wanting this man for a long time, not sexually, but I just wanted to have him as a guest. And I will introduce him in just a minute. But before I'll introduce him, I wanna make sure that you follow us on Trendencias Live on Facebook and you follow us on our other social media, Trendencias Live on Instagram. And if you're watching this right now, you can share this video and do a, a live by putting a star watch party on the little three dots to the right underneath the video. You can click in there, start a watch party, and you can share uh, this video with all of us because we have an amazing show. Uh, and we're gonna be moving forward to 2021, but we're gonna go backwards to 1990 and it's one of my to the 1990s and it's one of my favorite fashion eras of supermodels and Versace and Chanel and Dior and we're going to get to all of that uh without further ado I want to introduce to you a dear friend of mine and he is the photo he's the main uh, he's a photographer for EZ Studios in New York City and the editor in chief of Jess magazine I don't know if I pronounced it wrong, so he's gonna correct me. He's my new friend that I met during coronavirus. One of the best things that happened during coronavirus. My name, my my friend is Equal de la Rosa. Is Equal, welcome to Trendencias. Hey, how are you? You I have to correct you on a couple of things. Okay, correct me, correct me. Yeah, you're Latino, so if you're gonna say my Ese, name, Ezequiel. It's you know, not in English. It's spelled with a Q, not a K. Okay. So that's the one thing. And it's S Studios is my location, my studio location in New York. Okay. Hi everybody. Oh my God, the lighting right now it's not right with the with the uh, computer, but that's okay. But because okay. here is beautiful anyway. To all my viewers in Tendencias, this is what an editor in chief does: critique, critique, critique. Not the right name, not the right lighting, and that's why he is where he is. <laughs> Ezequiel, right? Yes, right? very good. See? Ezequiel, <laughs> it's so sexy, it's so sexy. Right. You, you can either say it in English and just call me Ez. Oh, Ez. Ezequiel, see? Eze Ezequiel, I think Ezequiel is so sexy. Oh, I love my name, but I just don't like it butchered. Oh, okay, <laughs> Rewind, Ezequiel, you yeah. are originally from Cuba? I'm Cuban descent, yes. Uh, so you're not born in Cuba, you're born? No, 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 I'm born in Cuba. Oh, okay, T talk to me, talk to me, give me your, your three minute bio. Okay, I was born in Cuba, and at the age of five, uh, I left Cuba with my mother and my sisters, and uh, we came to uh, the fabulous New Jersey, where we were. And I've been in New York City for a very long time. I lived in Europe for several years. Um, so that's my life in a nutshell. No, you know? no, no, that's not your life. So you moved to New York. And right. then how does the passion for photography, where does that, is that something that comes from uh, when you were a little nene or a little bit? Uh, oh God. Well, let me, let me turn on more lights because I, I have, I got, I need light. <laughs> you need to be lit up like a Christmas tree. You're like Cher or Barbara, right? <laughs> um, well, um, fashion for me started very young. Um, I always love to sketch, and I love everything about fashion. So, like in school, I would always get in trouble 
in the sense, I wouldn't get in trouble because the teachers love me, but, um, you know, I would be distracted because I would look at the teacher's outfit and I would go, oh, she's wearing the wrong thing. So I would sketch something like uh, for her to wear. Um, I originally, I when I first got since the age of 10 or 11, I wanted to be a designer. Oh. Um, and I started making clothes. I had my first shows when I was like 15 and stuff like that. And then, you know, I had my first show in New York, I think at 19 or 18. Um, and then I had a store um, when I was very young, but uh, the women that invested the money that bought all my collection, oh my gosh, una telenovela. All of a sudden. Um, Were they giving you Telemundo? It would seriously, you know, cause I've been on Netflix. Like I never watch TV, but now I'm on Netflix. And seriously, I like love the Spanish telenovelas. And you know, I didn't even put two and two together because you know what, when I was like, like, cause I don't do illegal shit. So I was like 19 or something like that. And I go to clean the company car. I go and wash the company car. And I don't smoke and I hate ash. You know, and there's some, and there, one of my associates was a smoker. So I pick up the ashtray, OMG, there was heaps of money in uh, on the bottom of the ashtray. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. So I called my lawyer and go, listen, I need to get out of it. Uh, so I got out of it and I didn't know what it was going to do because I was really depressed. I mean, I had a store and everything and it was really, I designed it. I had, you know, it was crazy, but I, I figured it was money laundry and I said, I cannot do anything illegal. So I left that. And then everybody used to tell me that I looked like this model. So I modeled for a while. Um, and, um, then when I was doing a job, the makeup artist was going to do too much makeup. And I said, no, no, I'll do my own. And then it was a grooming book. And the photographer asked me, can you do other, um, can you do makeup on other people or grooming? And I said, sure. How much does it pay? That's all I asked. So I started there. And then after the book was done, because it was like a big grooming book, at those times they did a lot of, you know, grooming books and things. Um, can, he asked me, can you do women? I said, sure. How much does it pay? And then I started doing hair makeup. <laughs> and I did it for several years. I traveled the globe. Um, lived in uh, Milan first. Then I moved to Paris and uh, did that for five years. Uh, and then I decided I wanted to come home um, and started working in New York. And then I fell into photography by uh, accident. Um, I wanted to show uh, a designer the hairstyle that I was going to do for the shows. And I took a picture of a friend and all of a sudden, oh, can you do more? And I never did guys. I did girls. And then, and then you said, how much does it pay? Uh, well, <laughs> no, they, the agency said, oh, can you do our guys? And I go, I don't have the time and it's expensive. I can't do this. I go, no, no, we're going to pay you. So I said, Okay, fine, I'll do it. Um, and, you know, because I always thought photography was a schleppy job. Because it was like, you know, you shoot and then you have to go get the film and then all that. It's a long process by the time you're done with the day. You know, hair and makeup, you finish that six o'clock and like, baby, I am done. Time to have a cocktail and be happy. But, um, all of a sudden, I have fallen in love with photography. I love doing it. I love the direction. And I was, I never studied it. It was, I worked with so many incredible photographers. Um, and I really just picked up different things um, that for me, it comes easy, you know, where to place the light and stuff like that. And also from, um, you know, I started when I was like three years old in the fashion business by the time I was in Europe. Um, so I worked with a lot of the girls that were, you know, divas. So it's like, you know, they didn't like to be on set too much. Like 
If you don't have the picture, you don't have it. So, and I hated like being on set for a long time. What's going to take so long to take a photo? If you're all set and you have a professional model, you got it like this. You know? let, me, let me interrupt you for just a minute because I have worked as a, I, I'm not a stylist, but yeah. I have worked as a stylist because yeah. I have an eye for this looks proportionate, let's make something funky, la da 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 da. But I have worked with a few photographers and there is so many different, it's like any kind of uh, school, any kind of, you have the photographers that take, uh, in Spanish, we say cuchucientos pictures, like, it's like millions of pictures. And then we have a photographer that once the light is right, once the, the person is dressed, it's like four pictures were done and then there is the middle ground. So I, I can sympathize with well, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, well, basically like, you know, I think you lose something, uh, an emotion, um, the moment that you take too long with a model um, or with anybody. Uh, I mean, look, if you're in front of the camera for such a long time, oh, you don't have it already? Oh my God, what, you know, and you're the subject, you're like, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't he have the photo? Um, so I'm then so then that model starts questioning herself and right. she's not delivering as much. Right, so I'd rather like lose one shot and warm up and like, oh my God, you're gorgeous, boom, 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 and get a fabulous story out of it because, you know, you didn't get the uncertainty. It was like when I would work with um, Esco, uh, uh, Scooby Studio, like Escobulos, you know, by the time you left the studio, your head couldn't like walk out the door because everything was fabulous. Darling, fabulous. Oh my God, you look fabulous. Oh my God, the hair makeup is fabulous. Everything's fabulous. So you would leave out the door like this, you know, with like this big head. Um, and that's a good train of thought. Um, but then there is the other ones that you're there until two o'clock in the morning and oh, you yeah. leave, and wait, wait, and you leave the place and you feel like a, like a prune, like a raisin, like you have nothing else to give. And then the, the picture might be great, but the, 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 the tra trajectory is so heavy and so overworked. Do you know what I mean? Trust me, it is crazy. Um, I, I have a story to tell you. I remember being in Rome because years ago, you know, it, um, you know, you wanted to work for Italian Vogue, you wanted to work for uh, Bazaar, for what you flew over there and you lived over there, or else they flew you over. I remember, yeah. and I was flown, I, the first time I worked uh, for Harper's, um, I, I was flown over with a photographer, with the photographer flew me over. The second time, um, they flew me over themselves. OMG, this was so crazy. Um, I did like five shoots in one day, uh, starting at four in the morning, and then at seven or eight, I was at the hotel. That was my fifth shoot, and I was having a dinner because everybody would meet at dinner. And all of a sudden, they go to me. Oh my God, Gibor Dan just saw you and he threw everybody out and he wanted to work with you. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be working all night long for one picture. Oh my God. And, and you know, I had worked with him before, so I knew exactly how he, but that was torturous. But, you know. So, from the photography to the magazine, the magazine, is it the fifth, sixth? Issue this is the fourth issue, fourth and, issue, fourth issue. But, but it's totally new. Like, the funny thing is, you know, we plan things, we organize things, and then God has a way of doing something different. Um, I wanted to start the old fashioned way and basically be hard copy. And I was in luxury hotels, airport lounges, and airplane. So, um, now I'm I had to go digital because of Corona. Right. Uh, so now I'm going in a digital form, uh, the whole, like for the whole thing now, which is a total new thing. 
So we're starting a lot of different things that uh, are new to us. Talk to me about the latest issue that we're seeing right here. Who's the girl in the cover? And I'm gonna talk about the fashion illustrator of, uh, at the bottom, which I, is one of my favorite from my days when I went to, to school at the Art Institute and I'm a fashion illustrator myself. Anything you wanna tell me about this? Okay, so the girl on the cover is Anna Lina Fania, which I'm totally obsessed with. Um, I met her at an event and uh, we became instant friends and she is an amazing talent. Um, she played Gloria on Broadway, but since then has been doing a lot more, uh, which you will see in the interview that I did with her because my YouTube channel is going up, uh, I think sometime this week. Uh, and I don't know when her interview is going to be going up, but it'll be going up. And um, she is just amazing. And now she is on Younger next season that it comes out. Uh, uh, I love the fact that you said that she played Gloria in the musical because I love me some conga. Uh, uh, so let's talk about the fashion illustrator at the bottom well don't call him a fashion illustrator oh 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 correction uh he made me very much aware he's an artist okay not a fashion illustrator and i don't want to get my friends back so i will call him an artist because he's an amazing artist um this was an amazing story that just came about i love alvaro he is such a delight and such a talent and we've always wanted to collaborate uh, together and do something. And, and this was a last minute thing, cause I, you know, I was shooting in Brooklyn and then I didn't get the releases on time. And I said, oh my God, I can call a barrel and have something even better. Um, so I did. And then that's how this story came about. You know, change is inevitable. I love the fact that from a, from a problem, comes such a beautiful spread that I encourage all of our viewers to see at gazmagazine.com. Uh, make sure that you look at our latest issue. I'm actually part of the new issue. And uh, I love, 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 love him. I followed him when I was in school. I love his style. It reminds me very much of uh, Interview Magazine, that kind of look of the... Yeah. Uh, 90s you know what i mean um we have another spread right here i love well i love my spread right on top with the products which is what i love to do i'm a product i don't want to say whore because we are pg here but and then we have these gorgeous pictures of the city uh were these pictures taken during coronavirus question yeah, um they were um you know i started working um back at the beginning of may um and i you know everybody was very safe you know everybody was wearing masks and stuff and i and this issue is a tribute to new york i hated the fact that the new york post uh said that new york is dead um i'm a new yorker i've been here forever and uh, the fact that we're going through a hard time Okay, we're going through a hard time, but you know, New Yorkers made about is made out about the dreamers. Uh, that's what makes New York uh, people with a dream, and they come here to create something, to do something, and that is the essence of New York. Um, as you can see now, um, New York is very desolate, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to come back alive, and it will. You know, and this is something this virus has been something that has affected the whole world well no. let me let me interrupt you for just a second because my uh ex uh lives in new york city and uh he is an acupuncturist and he's a, he's a doctor of acupuncture and uh we we are very we're we're still very close and he was telling me that uh right now like you guys pay the price at the beginning but yes, right now you guys are the safest place on the States, pretty yeah, much. Uh, we are. I mean, I think we, you know, the thing right now, um, 
we're cautious because we've been through it. We It was hell in the city. Um, but thank God for New Yorkers that um, we're strong and stronger than ever. Yeah. Um, so that's the incredible thing about You guys are made out of Teflon. You know yeah. what I mean? You're like there, there's nothing that you haven't seen, rats or pigeons or, uh, you know, like this crazy virus that because you live on top of each other, you had to take major well, precautions. That's, that's the whole thing. But, you know, and there's a fear factor uh, that the news has installed because, you know, I, I travel a lot. Um, and this year, I think my first trip was about a month ago or a month and a half ago. And I did the uh, Coup de Florida. Uh, so, because <laughs> I, I could go over to Europe. And, and I actually had the best time. And the funny thing is that because of all the political unrest and because of all the corona thing, it was like, I was fearful of going because uh, people were telling me people don't wear masks, they're, they're not protecting themselves. And I found that to be a myth. Um, just like, uh, I guess we hear news that there are places in New York that people are crazy, but that's everywhere in the world that people are not, and that's why we're- um, Where we are. We're having the problems with the virus. I mean. Uh, it is up in numbers, uh, you know, and uh, we have to be really cautious. Like I just did my last shoot this week because I said, well, the virus is going up and, you know, I'm ahead of the game right now because uh, my next- You have a lot of product. I have a lot of product for the following issue because um, yeah, I started shooting in Florida and I got some amazing stories. I did a lot of story with some amazing artists. And, you know, normally I go to Europe and, and cover a lot of places. And it was really amazing. I mean, I, you know, I'm Cuban born and yes, I'm Cuban, but I'm a proud American. And I'm so proud of what I discovered through this trip. I mean, I was in St. Petersburg and there's so many amazing, talented artists in St. Petersburg uh, that is just astounding. Um, so, you know, you got to take lemons and make lemonade. Well, that's the thing. It's like you discover new things. I would have never, and I have a friend of mine, Silvana Camargo, on the show. Uh, uh, she's watching and she's commenting tonight. And we're working on another project together uh, like a Spanish version of this. Yes, I just said that out loud. I see, mijo, tu sabe. Yeah, yeah. She worked in like a lot of Spanish uh, TV and uh, we're like brothers and, and brother and sister. And uh, I would have never come up with this show unless it was because I was, as a creative person, I was bored and I needed to channel my creativity yeah. into this. So you have to channel your thing into that. I want to also say that I went to visit my brother in North Carolina uh, in July, July, August, somewhere around that. Uh, you know us artists, we don't do time that well. And uh, I went there <laughs> and uh, I went there and I loved it. I felt very safe on the plane because I was, I was wearing two masks because I'm a little extra. Plus I design masks. And then uh, I went back two months after. I went back because it was the mountains, the the, the 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 leaves were changing. It was so good to be somewhere else. I mean, I might just move over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, the mask to wear on the plane is the K95. That's what you have to wear. Right. Uh, it's. Um, Did you it, just open a bottle right there? Uh, yes. You're, you're my type of guest, honey. Haunty. Haunty. Yeah. Yes, I, wait a minute. I got this gorgeous gift the other day, and I'm like, wait, wait, I, I, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing you. Cheers, ching ching. Cheers. Oh, um, I got a gorgeous gift that arrived the other night, really late, and it was like a gorgeous box. I came with the Tiffany uh, glass, and it, here's my Tiffany box. And oh my God, bougie stuff. Bougie. Bougie. New York bougie, New York bougie. Yeah, right. so, so we got to keep moving because otherwise we, we already talked for a half hour. 
Oh and my I'm God. supposed to go only for a half hour. But, oh my God. Yeah, so we just get, we have to start. And one of the reasons what I'm so excited about is that I'm not going to say what your age is, but we are similar in age, I'm assuming. Oh, I'm not afraid of my age. Okay, so what is it? I'm 57. And I'm 54, 55 in May. I'm not ashamed of it at all. Never been, never been. Yeah. And I know you've been in the fashion industry in during the 90s, 80s, 90s, and now. And uh, I thought that it would be a great idea to do a show looking back instead of forward. I mean, we're looking forward because of, uh, you know, we want to get 2020 behind us. But oh, no, 100%. Exactly. So enter the era of elegance. You can read any cover of any magazine, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, during the 1990s, and you would see models who represented this credo uh, from 80s powerhouse like Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, to newcomers like Kate Moss, this diver diverse beauties superseded the closed esoteric confines, stepping out of the runway into the global stage. One quote from Linda Evangelista describes their major, major hit on the, uh, on the fashion industry. And she said, Linda says, we don't wake up for less than $10,000 a day. Oh, she famously said that in the 1990s. And we are going to round up the best catwalkers of the 90s. Okay, you were going to say something. Sorry. Um, well, I mean, you had Nadia Aram in there, which I love. Very intelligent model. Uh, did a trip with her and love her. Yes. Uh, uh, longest legs in the business. Oh, my God. All legs. Mm-hmm. And Seymour right. that I know from since she was uh, 16. Or even or fifteen, I don't remember. Well, you have worked with some of the best of the best, and let's get started right away, shall we? Yeah. All right. All right. Before uh, I, let me take this slide off because this is important for me to say. Um, people, release it to the Holy Spirit. These are not the best models of the whole time. We're talking about catwalk models catwalk not beauties are we clear on that all right so we're gonna start with number seven and number seven is none other than miss kate moss So Kate Moss' entry to the fashion industry was very controversial because uh, she was discovered at the tender age in London, at the tender age of 14 years, and she was very skinny, very waif-like. Uh, her figure was a contrast to the Amazonian body that preceded her. Indeed, she was the poster child for the grunge style that pervaded through the rest of the 90s. And her party-going lifestyle and string of famous relationships only heightened her reputation. Still, her name crossed industry barriers, becoming part of the pop culture lexicon. Kate, oh, I put the wrong uh, slide. Sorry. I was wondering. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. Kate Moss, right? Kate, Kate, why isn't it not going to Kate Moss? Don't know. All right. So we are talking about Kate Moss. Kate Moss. I can find the slide right here. What do we feel about Kate, Kate Moss? Well, you know, all the power to her. Um, you know, that's when diversity came in also because, you know, a girl that's not that tall to be walking the catwalk. Um, you know, she's not tall at all. Um, and, 
you know, a total different look. And meanwhile, look at her where she arrived, you know? So it's what you believe in yourself, you know? I, I love her story because people made fun of her. Uh, There's nobody who made fun of her. She's great. Well, I mean, but people did make fun yeah, of her. Yeah, people, yeah. It's like, eat a sandwich, Kate Moss, and all of that stuff because she was so, uh, they call her coke addict, da 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 da, and da da da. But mind you, she had a sickening walk, as we saw in the video. I, I, I love her story. She, to this day, she's one of my favorite, favorite models of all time. Cool. Anything else you want to say? No, I, you know, I, I want to hear all your things. I will give you my comment. <laughs> all right. So I skipped a little bit, but I'm going to go to Miss Christy Turlington, who yeah. is number six. <laughs> Did I get this right now? You got it right. Yes! Okay. Along with Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, Turlington, uh, she rounded out what the fashion industry coined as the Holy Trinity. She was born in Oakland, California. She started modeling locally in right here in Florida. But it was not until moving to New York City at the tender age of 18 when her dominance at the top of the modeling world solidified. Over the years, Turlington left to get an education. She graduated cum laude in New York's uh, youth, uh, NYU's Gallatin School of Independent Studies, and she now focuses focuses uh, her efforts on Every Mother Counts, an organization that, according to its mission statement, works to make pregnancy and childbirth safe for every mother everywhere. What do you think about Miss Turlington? J'adore. I J'adore. Oh, I love you for that. She is, oh my God. She's so beautiful. Um, I'm going to put her back and we can talk my, over the video, um, over the slide. She's one of my favorites from the 90s. Uh, I just love everything about her. The, you know, she's just gorgeous. That's what I can say. I think I, think I know what you like her because i i sympathize with her about her heart uh because she was sickening and she was delivering but she also after she became of age she actually started focusing on giving back do you know what i mean well that's very important that's something that i think we all have to do all right so the next model is something somebody that most people would think oh my god She's not number one. Are you kidding me? What's going on here? And her name is, uh, some people go by two names. This one goes by one name and her name is Linda. Okay. So Miss Linda Evangelista was heralded as the ultimate chameleon. And you could see here, dark hair, blonde hair, red hair. The Canadian supermodel went through the 90s, changing her hairstyle and garnering headlines for doing so. From black pixie to cut to a red bob to platinum blood quaff, Evangelista's look season after season captured the attention of all of designers who made her face of campaigns and the centerpiece of runway shows. 
Talk to me, Miss Ezequiel, Ezequiel de la Rosa. Well, Linda was everything. I mean, she was the Madonna of fashion. Because, uh, you know, as a chameleon, which is Madonna is a chameleon. Yep. Uh, um, uh, Linda just ruled the, uh, the fashion world for those years. Yeah, she was everything to me. And, and a lot of people think that um, she should be the one, and she could be the one if we're talking about, in general, uh, beauties and models from the 1990s. Don't you think? Yes, I would have to agree. I would say that she would be number one right next to, I'm not even going to say the other name. Yeah. All right. So before we continue, we're going we're gonna to take a, a short break because we need a word from our sponsors. And a word from our sponsors is the Bella Reina Spa right here in, uh, right in South Florida. Lovely, but what about me? Uh, we need when you come. Wait, okay, when you come down, I'm gonna hook you up with Bella Reina Spa so they can give you a sickening facial. Is that good? Yeah. Well, I actually have an amazing girl down there, but I'll try them. All right. So then, don't complain, and then no, don't, don't complain. I'll try them. <laughs> she, her name is actually Nancy Reagan, and she is very well known for the being the first lady, Nancy Reagan of skincare down here in South Florida. So make sure you let me know and I'll hook you up. I definitely will. All right, another thing that we talk about during Trendencias is one of my favorite segments, which, which is the fashion memes of the week. And I kind of tailor these for the people that are on my show. Okay. And uh, I this is how I see you. This is my fashion meme of the week. This is how you like change how your life changes the world you walk into a group of not so happy people and then your energy your light your spirituality just keeps expanding over and over until you are a light of the world oh my god that is such a blessing thank you so much. <laughs> but that's, that's beautiful. i'm not even trying to butter you up i just think and i don't even know you in person although i do feel like we are brothers already but this is how i kind of see you because you are very much a light chaser in sometimes a dark world. Yeah, well, I believe that we have to do our part to make the world a better place. Um, you know, we've been given talents, uh, and we all have talents. Uh, and we have to use them for the good. You know, uh, I'm actually writing a story that I'm really happy about. Um, a friend of mine uh, just um, undergo uh, cancer. Oh. And, uh, you know, she had to do chemo and she's losing her hair. She sent me a photo of herself without any hair because she lost the hair. And I go, oh my gosh, she looked gorgeous. <laughs> and I said, but girl, I know you. You need some wigs. So I said, oh, I got to do a photo shoot with you. And I got to hook up some wigs and let me tell you i was so impressed to find out uh, that there's so many great organizations that provide things for women with cancer um so impressed uh like there's wigs for wishes and omg uh i got my friend uh andre david to do this most amazing wig as well uh my friend was blown out and the photo shoot and i'm going to bring that out early because there's so many women that are going through this and you know when you go through something i've been through health issues uh i got pneumonia oh my god that's why i hid when corona came i was like oh no i'm staying home yeah. <laughs> if it's anything like a pneumonia uh-uh um 
we feel very alone. Um, and so I'm going to come up with this story probably in January. I have an amazing writer writing the story already. Um, already done the photos and stuff. And just I'm amazed at all the amazing people that are giving of their service uh, mm -hmm. to this. Uh, I mean, uh, like the company Wigs for Wishes are working for 10 years now. And a woman who needs a wig and they send them a wig. Uh, wow. the, their hair. Um, so, yes, we have to shine a light. What yep. and that's how I, that's how I see you. Yeah. And you know how I don't see you as our next meme of the week. And this next meme of the week doesn't need any kind of words. I just want you to look at it and let me know what you think. Okay. Do you like chicken? Do you like fried chicken? I love. Good. There was a place in New York called Lola's. Do you like Kentucky Fried Chicken? No, child. No, thank God I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Kentucky Fried Chicken here, huh, T? Uh, what? Uh, where is the head on the pants? I don't know what's going on here. Ooh, I, I had to take it to a happy place from the cancer. Not that the cancer story was sad, but... Like, oh, really? Do we need? I I just want to leave it right there, and then we're gonna go straight to Miss Diana Ross' daughter, Tracy Ellis Ross. Oh, oh my God, she's wearing a dress from her mother. No, this is actually a Valentino Couture, and she was actually trying some dresses, and she posted this on Instagram, and she immediately gave me life. Yeah. What do you think about this dress? Wouldn't you want to shoot this dress? Tell me. Oh my God. Well, first of all, I love the dress and I love Tracy. You know, I have met Tracy years ago in New York. I didn't even, you know, and I'm a Diana Ross fan. Uh, and I was on a dance floor with Tracy and we had the best time. I never knew she was the daughter of Diana Ross. Uh, She's a sweetheart. I haven't seen her in years. Um, but, oh, my God, giving me life. That's all I can she say. She is giving you life, oxygen, and all of that stuff. Yes. All right. So let's go back to our models, shall we? Our next mm -hmm. model is somebody that you might think, like, really? That far up? Number four? But it's none other than... Tyra Banks is from, she went from model to media mogul. Uh, Banks' career is a string of epic highs. She conquered her first runway show in Paris uh, Fashion Week, and she booked editorial shoots in all of the top uh, magazines. She signed some major, major contracts with CoverGirl, Victoria's Secrets, and she became the first black model to be on the front of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue. But it was her moves outside the industry that catapulted Banks to the upper echelons of fame. She started in a number of films, television shows. She recorded music albums. I didn't know this. Founded her charities and created the only show, America's Next Top Model, which has run over 24 cycles. So, Tyra Banks. Um what can I say? Uh, she's totally amazing, uh, a very smart uh, woman. Um, I admire her for what she's done. Uh, I remember, oh my God, when she first came out, there was this whole photo shoot. And, you know, she, I think she was with Elite, and Naomi was with Elite as well, I, I believe at that time with Elite. And it was like the, Pictures came out and it's like, 
oh my God, Naomi looks very light on these photos. And it was it was hilarious. Uh, uh, I remember that day, uh, that was crazy. But um, I mean, amazing. But um, talk about a career. I mean, uh, just, like, just like Heidi Klum, who came up with Project Runway, yeah. I mean, Tyra Banks, I mean, I'm holding three pictures in my hand and only two models are standing in front of me. I mean, like, are you kidding yeah. me right now? Talk about taking it to the bank and then keep going with other TV shows, including- Brilliant. I mean, and, bow down. Exactly, right. this is how you do it. This is like the struggle is real. Yeah, real Let's yeah. keep moving. And our next model is not other, and if I pronounce a name wrong, please correct me because you already did and that's what you do, but it's not other than Shalom Harlow. So, like her fellow Canadian Linda Evangelista, Harlow has been distinguished for her cat-like appearance, which designers like Isaac Miserahi, Alexander McQueen, and Mark Jacobs have utilized on her runways and in their campaigns. And along with her frequent collaborator, because they were kind of twins, Amber Valleta, uh, she co-hosted House of Styles on M House of Style on MTV and segued into a film industry. Uh, including How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and Vanilla Sky. Yes. What do we feel about Miss Shalom? Talk to me, darling. I uh, love her. I mean, you have basically picked a lot of great models. And, you know, that's another girl that can change from one shoot to another. Chameleon. Yeah. That can be very versatile. Right. Uh, any before we keep going, uh, our friend who introduced us, who's that? Who's guilty? Hi, Jesse. Mr. Jesse is right there. Hi, Jesse. Anyway, so uh, enough of Jesse. Let's just take him out of the picture. I'm just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> uh, we have to take. Uh, we have another sponsor, and this is a sponsor that is really, 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 really picky is the Marrera Collection, which a new line of punches for the holidays. So let's take a 20 second video for the Marrera Collection. You know, those little punches are so cute. They're <laughs> All right, so our next model to keep keep it going is, all right, so here we go. This is our top two. So before we go to the top two, people don't lose your, your head uh, because this is top cat walkers. But our number two is not other than the only Naomi Campbell. Well, All right, 
before you say anything, okay. I'm supposed to read what I wrote about Naomi Campbell. I cannot even read it because to me, she is live. She, to me, is like the Beyonce of the catwalk. She has often, she was often the only black model in the runway lineups, in the campaigns and editorial shoots, a pervasive mindset that she has fought to overturn throughout her illustrious career. Uh, Miss Naomi Campbell might have a bad temper and she might throw you a cell phone, but you cannot take anything away from this queen. Talk to me. Well, okay. I just have to say that, first of all, she should have been number one. Uh, because she is still walking the catwalk and looking amazing. Um, she commands, a, you know, the room when she walks in. And her walk has only gotten better. So... I think that that should have been number one, darling. Well, uh, and you know what? I, I actually... I don't have to look at anybody else. I don't care who you put. Oh, oh you're, you're going you're gonna to go there with me. I'm darling. going there with you. Oh, well, you know that. what? It's called Trendencias with Carlos Marrero, not Trendencias with Ezequiel. Ezequiel is a queen. I'm telling you what it is. <laughs> well... Our number one pick, and we have a <laughs> jury of 17 uh, experienced people. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's not other than, uh, okay, before, before I, I actually do have to get a little serious here because she, Naomi Campbell, and you can research this, no tea, no shade, she actually said that during a uh, Versace catwalk that the next person that I'm going to introduce has a better walk than her. So I'm not even, I'm not even going there because even Miss bitchy Naomi Campbell, who I love said that this woman has a better walk. I didn't say that she has a better legacy. She has a better walk. And this is none other than Jessica. <laughs> Before you talk, let me just read that she was born in, uh, Yasmin was born in Montreal to a German mother and an Indian father in a Muslim household. Uh, she was ignored, she ignored her father's dissuasion. Her father didn't want her to be a model and she still fought for it. Her defiance proved successful. She landed hefty contracts with Valentino, uh, Victoria's Secret, listen to me in, in the Spanish uh, accent, Victoria's Secret and Christian Dior and appeared in fashion spreads all over the world. She has the tiniest, she had the tiniest, tiny little waist. And to me, hands down, she had the best walk. Go. Okay, Carlos, I just have to tell you one thing. I totally forgot about Jasmine and Hello. Okay. I. Oh my God. I would go out of breath when I saw her come down the runway, and when I saw her just anywhere. I. I am totally in love. I. I have to tell you. Oh my God. It's a tie. I always wondered what her. Say that again. I'm sorry. I'm always wondering what happened with her. I haven't seen her around. I love 
Oh my God, she is so gorgeous. I have to tell you. Well, the thing that I love about Yasmin is that her look was not cookie cutter. Not at all. Because of her background, and she, her body was sickening. I mean, her waist, and I'm a fashion illustrator and an artist, apparently, Ezekiel. Yeah. Um, uh, as an artist, I just loved her shape. And she was like none other. Like you almost felt like she was going to break because she had no waist. Do you know what I mean? Oh like she had no... Uh, uh, I honestly... I, 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 well, oh, somebody's saying, I honestly don't remember this model. Very exotic oh, and attractive. God. If you saw her on the catwalk and you saw her on any editorials because she was all over, a uh, goddess, a total goddess. Okay? I thought, uh, does that mean that you agree with me? Well, I got to tell are you, you. Are you taking something back? Well, hmm. I got to tell you that I'm going to put it as a tie <laughs> because, oh my God, Jasmine, I just love that girl. Jasmine. Okay. Oh, so Martin. the reason why it was not uh, Naomi uh, number one is because I'm not kidding you. When I do my research, I read that Naomi said that Jasmine was number one. And to me, Jasmine was number one because Naomi has a longer career more money career she's still doing it but this show tonight was not about that this show was about a walk and she knew how to you know, turn she, it. Pretty, but you know we you left up two amazing girls that, all right wait wait let me see if they're here because we have some honorable mentions i don't know if they're here i I'm, i didn't discuss this with you we have helena christensen uh cindy crawford amber we have Tanj Tanjana uh, Patiz, uh, Claudia Schiffer, and Carla Bruni. Did I? No? I still no, missed it? No, darling. You missed them. Uh, all right. So who do you want? They were the dynamic duel. Uh, Marpesa, who was diva on the runway, and Veronica Webb, uh, who was a total diva. Well, I, I, I do have to say that... Um, uh, let, let, let's get real for a second. This was the age of the model. You know, this was the, not the model, supermodel with a capital S. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We never went back to that. You know, yeah. we, we still have the gen, the Caitlyn Jenner and all of that stuff. Oh my God. Let me not do that because if she wants to come in the show, I want to make sure that she's anyway, we, we have the Kardashians and we have the other ones, but they're like, Instagram models like this was not like the golden age of supermodel. Well, well, the you know the thing is that one of the things that people have to remember when you wanted to be a model back then it was work. Yeah, uh, you traveled the world. Uh, you went on castings. Uh, you waited to find out if you got the job. You, I mean, you had to go from. Paris, Milan, London, you name it. You were in a plane every single week. Uh, like today, you know, a lot of things right now are like, oh my God. I look right. Crazy. And mean, the filters and da 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 and da da da. Yeah. It's, it's not probably crazy. easier to get famous in a bathroom uh, right. than like the way that we had to do it before that we traveled around and you know it wasn't we all it was all very hush hush and it wasn't like ex, you know like being on social media 24 7. now it's a total different world and you know we have to be millennials i call it the microwave mentality you know it's like boom i want to be famous you know what i mean because i believe that we don't have the the tenacity of keeping the hustle do you know what i mean all right, it's 10 o'clock, we are done, and uh, it was supposed to be a half an hour, and we went over another hour, and I don't care because I can talk another hour with you, and I hope that you can come back to Trendencias and we can talk about other topics. Maybe we talk about a different type of model or whatever it is that we come, come up with.
Well, I would love to. We'll definitely talk. There's a lot to talk about. Um, and uh, you know where to find me. All right. One thing before you go. Yes. I want you to tell me what are you leaving behind in 2020 and what are you looking forward to 2021? Oh, my God. I'm going to be leaving behind some pounds. Oh, and, yes. And, uh, and Corona, I hope. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Yeah. It's been a tough year, but I believe that everything we go through, we go through so that we become a better person. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like it doesn't matter how the journey goes as long as you get to the other side. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, and before we go and we're coming down for a landing, it doesn't matter what race you are, what job you have, what car you drive the only thing that matter is that your is your character so yeah. please be kind to each other please be thankful for what it is that you have in front of you because if we're not thankful nothing better is going to come through and let's get excited let's get excited about 2021 yeah. ezekiel i love you and i cannot wait yeah. to keep working with you and your magazine Thank you for being with me on the last show. Before we go, I have to say that next year we have a Spanish show coming up in the works. And uh, uh, I just love doing what I do for my viewers. I want to say Feliz Navidad, Merry Christmas, and Feliz Año Nuevo. Happy New Year to all of you. Until then, his name, well, let me see if I get it right this time. His name is Ezequiel de la Rosa. My name is Carlos Marrero. And you are watching Trendencias. I'll see you next year. Bye. Congrats. <laughs>